What is the crack lads? How we doing? I have a very special guest for you on the channel today. I went to, this was a uni unique one because usually when I ask a guest to come on, uh, even if I say to them, oh, take me to one of your favorite pubs, typically it's a pub that I've been to before today was different. Kevin McGahern, my guest today, you may remember him. You may remember him with Troy McClure. You may remember him from such things as hosting Republic of Telly. Go even further back, he was in the Hardy books. Sim card, probably the most underrated Hardy books character. Fast forward to 2024, he is fresh off of his shy talker. Very good wordage on that, Kevin. Comedy tour, and he is just fresh off the shelf. Front page news, started a brand new podcast called The Lovely Show with none other than a very funny fellow comedian, Justine Stafford. So he's a busy man, and he took time out of his day to have a pint, which was truly. Fever McGee's, this place was, yeah, it was an experience. So just wanna give a massive thanks to the sponsor of the video, the lads over at Manscaped. It's coming up to summer, lads. You are probably gonna be heading away to some sort of sunny destination. And at some point during, you will most likely be removing your top and letting it all hang out. Maybe not the balls. Maybe if you're on a nudist beach, I don't know, suit yourself. My point is, you can't be walking around looking like a big, hairy ape. You wanna be fresh, you wanna be clean, you wanna be well-groomed, and Manscaped are the best in the game in below the waist and above the waist grooming. Your best bet, and it's also very travel-friendly, the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. You've got the lawnmower with two different blade heads. You can go all out, shave it completely back, or you can play it a little bit safer, give it an L, one all over. Then you've got the Weed Whacker, That'll go up the nose, in the ears, all those kind of hard to reach places. We've got the post shave essentials, crop preserver, and also the crop soother. And it comes in a very travel friendly, waterproof wash bag. So to get your hands on these products, simply go to manscaped.com, use my code PINTS20 for 20% off, plus free delivery, and sail off into the sunset looking your best. Right lads, what is the crack? We are here on Parnell Street outside of Fibber McGee's. I'm here with comedian extraordinaire Kevin McGahan, just off of off the back of currently doing the Shy Talker Tour. Yes. Uh, this is offering me no promotion whatsoever. Just finished. So I've just finished it. So he's absolutely pointless in being here. <laughs> um, I got a free trip to a pub, so in the middle of the day. This is the first time I think ever on this channel where a guest has brought me to a pub I've never been. Something tells me I am in for a bit of an education. So Kevin, we'll go inside, you can walk us through the place, we'll have a pint. Sounds good. Sunglasses, you definitely need to remove from in here because <laughs> it's, like, it's darker than a mine. So this is the kind of main area here. Yeah. How's it going? Hey, it's a child friendly bar. Yeah. <laughs> I did that painting there. You did not. We were shooting a painting for a movie and I had this painting, we had the fibers after. And it was like one o'clock and I just said to the bar manager, I was like, I'll give you this painting if we can have a lock-in. Right. So he took the painting and we stayed drinking until about four o'clock. And he, he dropped us home after it. That's a, he's dragging his nuts through this way. Oh, he did that painting. <laughs> Pool area here. Sunken living room vibes. Yeah, jacks are over here. Here's the stage where most of the bands play. Yeah, now obviously it's it's, uh, it's a it's Wednesday. Three o'clock uh, in the day. Three o'clock in the yeah. day, so just imagine a load of absolute fucking mad bastards around yeah. here. There's a lot of sweaty moshing goes yeah. on here. <laughs> If you're comfortable with like a, a, a half naked man just rubbing his tits mm. against your face yeah. and flicking, More than with that. flicking wet rat tail hair across your face as he moshes, then this is a very. Is that what happened? This is the first time you came, you got some big tits across your face. Male man, tits. Male tits. Male, male tits, yeah. It's even better. <laughs> this is my spot. I was like, I'm coming back here. <laughs> so for my, uh, for my anniversary, my, yeah. wife, my wife took me here, my favorite bar. And she contacted the bar manager, gave her a DVD of um, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, yeah. favorite film. Right. So he had it on a projector here, and had a little table here, and brought us out cocktails. It was a magical, magical day. And were other people just kind of going, "What the hell?" Yeah, is they're kind of going, "What the fuck's going on here? <laughs> Why is there a movie <laughs> playing? <laughs> Why is there a just, weirdly romantic meal yeah, in yeah. front of a cowboy film?" <laughs> this is kind of where most people hang out okay, here. Okay, fair enough. Like I said, I've never been, so yeah. Oh, it's a bit more of a vibe, aye. So this is the, so, the main crack out here. Smoking area. Now I'm getting the vibe, the kind of... Yeah, 
the, the jukebox is mostly kind of heavy metal. Yeah. So like if you stick on Coldplay, it, it will get unplugged. What would be your favorite sort of bands then? Like? I'm a big Queens of Stone Age fan. Okay, I, I know that. So they're pretty main, yeah. mainstream. I love a guy called Devin Townsend. He's like prog metal from Canada. Frog metal? Prog. Prog. Yeah. Frog metal. <laughs> That's a new one. You'd be hopping after it though. <laughs> Mastodon. Judas Priest, I love Judas Priest. Heard of them, but putting yeah. in the song. Sure, what's Is up it connected here? to the living room? So that's the living room over there. So yeah, we share a Jeez, kind of outdoor area. That's so spot then. That must be great crack on a, like a day like today. It's like, a day. You get a good mix yeah. with the living room crowd and the Fibbers crowd. That is gas. You, you, can, you can spot who's who. You mix like the Bambi <laughs> thugs with the uh, actual thugs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'll fit. Uh, no, no there'd be better pints inside as well. Yeah. No? Oh well, yeah, that's the whole living room area there. Should I had anything get a pint? All good, Andy? Well, well. How are we getting on? All good, guys. All Long good. time no see. Are we allowed in behind your precious bar for five minutes? I've never been behind the bar here. You've never been behind the bar? No. You're welcome, sir. It's been a while. Second uh, tap is about. Second tap. Second one's about. This one here? Top tips. I'll just stand here. How's that chat? Talk us through your technique, Kevin. So, I think 45 degree angle. Yeah. And then, as you get closer and closer, tip it up. And then real swiftly bring it up like that. And then let it settle. I'll be here. Oh, baby, he's putting it up high. Only thing I would say is... Yeah. About, did I go not no, far looks, enough? No, it looks, looks good, but I only say, I would say, you dip the nozzle. Some people don't mind it. You don't so, dip a nozzle? I don't dip a nozzle. Why? <laughs> Stop that. <laughs> Like, so when it gets to the top, you, you, you keep your I, nozzle dry. I keep my nozzle dry, yeah. Oh, I see what you're doing. Yeah, 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 I, yeah. Do you know what? You could be right. It's a long time since I poured a pint. Use the pull-out technique. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely safer. <laughs> it is definitely safer. Is it true that you don't really need to wait for a pint to settle? Um, I, I have tried it because, you know yourself, you're doing Guinness videos for like four years. Is You're kind of you trying, want, trying everything under the sun. Sure. And I tried it and... Taste-wise, it's probably up to up for debate, mm. but it definitely you don't get the kind of creamy dome over the top, and okay. it just kind of sinks in. Okay, yeah, like yeah. A, like a meniscus, or is, that's probably the wrong term, but it kind of sinks inside. So it definitely, it probably definitely is like an aesthetic thing. Yeah. Uh, Taste-wise, and to be honest, it's all about the aesthetics, especially in this like, day and age. Like, look at you, look at this man. He didn't jump out of bed like that. <laughs> in the Republic of Tally days, he used to. After wrapping, you'd bring everyone here. Yeah, every Sunday we'd finish the shoot and we'd come straight to Fibbers. And it, I enjoyed introducing Fibbers to yeah. people who had I, never I fucking been here. Jennifer McGuire, I got Jennifer McGuire in Fibbers. I got Sheila O'Shea. No way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I almost, almost went too far. Almost. You can put it there if you want. Oh, like. Brave man, putting it up top shelf. That's very, very dark code fall, Kevin. Watch her closely. I mean, like, a good blow would knock that over. I or won't do it to you. It could be the greatest bit of damage known to man. <laughs> it could be. I, but, he's, it's basically a top hat. But if you, but if it spills, then the damage is null and void. I do you mean, know what? It looks it's like so damage risky. aside. If if you can carry that to the table without spilling it, fuck. I will give you absolutely nothing. Oh, look, it's starting to breach yeah, on my side breached. here. I think the I need walls, a straw. The dam is burnt. He's going to get a straw. What? He's doing it, lads. I'm, I'm going to cheat. He's doing it. First time ever on the channel. <laughs> I mean, that's technically and cheating. you're cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, you take yours, I'll take right. mine, and we'll head over to sit down. Everyone's got here with these jokers behind the bar. Buying their own drinks. <laughs> yeah. So that was quite the education. Slant to Kevin, thank, thank you, you very much. Cheers, Dar. Tastes like right. more. Tastes yeah, like more. Tastes like lots more. <laughs> That's, I, I don't want to offend anyone saying I'm surprised, but I just I was feeling like I was coming in here to, more for the, the pub itself than the Guinness, but it's a bloody good one. And it's three o'clock in the day, people who say this thing, oh, there's no flow, all this bollocks. I think that's shite. That's an excuse for a bad I'd time. say we're definitely not the first ones to drink a Guinness mm. today. Yeah. That, what, one thing I like about this bar is the collection of people. Yeah. Um, I like this bar because it feels like the 90s. It feels like... 100%. It feels like before phones. Um, and I notice if you sit out there in the smoking area, um, 
unlike a lot of pubs in Dublin, you never see anyone on their phone. Yeah. Doesn't like when you're waiting, your mates have gone to the bar, your mates have mm. gone to the toilet. You never feel the need to take out your phone yeah. and check shit because there's always somebody interesting to look at. Mm. I had no idea that was all out there. Yeah. Like, there's so much going on. You nearly feel like, like there's a place in Liverpool, Concert Square, where there's just so much going on and you're just looking around the whole time. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're people just, watching. You're people and like watching. you get a good mix. You could get like, like Japanese businessmen playing pool or German backpackers, or just salt of the earth, mm. owl Dublin alcoholics, <laughs> or goths, or punks. Um, so there's always somebody to kind of look at, yeah. you know? And it's a great mixing pot of people, you know? And would you have, like, you're from Cavan. Yeah. Did you live in Cavan long enough to grow up around the kind of the Cavan pub culture? Is there a Cavan pub culture? Um, there is, well, I mean, I grew up in a small village, so I would have worked in the local bar. Right. First job I had was like collecting bottles when I was like fucking eleven. Yeah. In the local pub, and then I got a a job later working in the pub when I was like seventeen, eighteen. Um. So yeah, there is definitely a big pub culture like any small town. But when I came up to Dublin, I immediately came here, cause like I'm into heavy metal, and I'm into heavy metal people. They're a lovely group of people. Yeah. They have a kind of a, I think if you're not, if you've never been to like a heavy metal gig or a club, they have a reputation of being like yeah. fucking Marilyn Manson or whatever. But I'm literally staring right at a sign that says heavy fucking metal. <laughs> <laughs> There's an aggression <laughs> and a, like a performative scariness. And is but it they, are, like, they are the fucking most decent is it like people a, in the world. Is like it like a shell? Soft, it's a, a, inner core kind of thing going on. I don't know, is it like even a hard shell? It's, um, Fair, yeah. I think a lot of people get into heavy metal when they're teenagers, maybe because they feel awkward or different, mm. or they don't quite fit in with their people on their road or whatever. Is that what you're kind of teenage like? Yeah, I mean, or? like I was, yeah, I was never, I was never into football, and football is the main currency where I'm from, yeah. Um, but people into metal are surprisingly kind and gentle. Well, like you'll notice, like I'm not sure about America because I've seen gigs in America where people, when they're moshing, the aim is to hurt as many people as possible. Okay. Whereas in Ireland, the aim uh, of moshing is to kind of get hit and okay. get back up. It's the sensation <laughs> of like, if somebody gives you a really hard shoulder and you're yeah. listening to your favorite band, it's a great sensation. Yeah. And if people fall, uh, especially if girls fall, everyone like steps back, you lift yeah, them up, right. you make sure they're okay, and you try and kind of protect each other. Um, and I really like that aspect of heavy metal gigs. Would you have like a, like you're saying, naming some of those bands outside, would you ever have seen any of them? But like, would, is heavy metal a bit niche that some of the bands don't really come to Ireland? No, or? there's a great scene in yeah. Ireland, there's like great local Irish bands. What would you say is the best kind of heavy metal gig mosh pit crack um, you've ever? Is the one stand out? Judas <coughs> Priest in the Three Arena was fantastic. Um, the first gig I was ever at, they're not quite heavy metal, but kind of rock, hard rock. Coldplay. <laughs> <laughs> first gig I was ever at was Queens of Stone Age when I was about 15, whenever that No One, no one Knows song came out. And that was, um, that was in Slain. And that was, it was just probably one of the biggest mosh pits I was ever mm. in. And I was like, this is fucking class. What a nice, relaxed Irish mosh pit. But yeah, as I said, they're, they take care of each other. Mm. You know, you're not there to hurt people, you're yeah. there to get hit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and kind of mind each other, because you know, we're all part of, you feel like, hey, this is our little special thing. Yeah. Know? And the gigs here, like there's gigs that. here every night of the week. I get that, and it's like, we all kind of grew up like, not fitting in with the sport and this, that, yeah, yeah. So you're well. looking for an alternative, yeah. You, you it's know? great. And I remember the first time we met only, only a few weeks ago, um, at a networking event, and now we're here. There was a free, free whiskey involved, free whiskey involved, yeah. That's <laughs> that's what I got here now. <laughs> um, but you said the first thing you said to me was, Do you believe in the pub carpet theory? Yes, would you like to elaborate on that? I've see if the I've people noticed, can, can relate. I, I've noticed that. The quality of a pint of Guinness is relative to the amount of carpet in the pub. <laughs> so if you go to an Irish pub with carpet on the yeah, floor, yeah. which is arguably the worst 
flooring you could yeah. have in a place yeah. that spills a lot of smelly like some liquids. Some have tile, some have wood. Yeah, lino, lino whatever. Carpet really. Carpet's the like, worst thing to clean. It's like having carpet in the toilet. Exactly, exactly. You don't want smelly liquids mixing with carpet, but pubs with carpet on the floor always have top class Guinness. I love it. But I was going to ask you, what makes Irish pubs uh, unique in your opinion? compared to other countries? Unique to Ireland or just unique I mean to like, okay, when I was, <clears throat> before, I, before I traveled anywhere, I was like, why the fuck is there Irish pubs all over the world? Yeah. Like, what's so special? Like, it's just fucking a gimmick to sell leprechauns, whatever. Yeah, but I, I'd when, say there's... When I went abroad, I went to England, first of all, and I could not get over how shit the, most of the pubs are. Oh, yeah, just because it's an Irish pub. Like, you're nearly ashamed that it's, certain pubs are Irish pubs. It's not about, you know, pictures of flags or fucking leprechauns or Guinness signs. It's to do with layout, I think, first of all. Mm. I notice, like, in a lot of English pubs, they have this kind of horseshoe bar thing. So when yeah, you walk... Yeah. Like, remember, have you ever seen Green Street? Yes. Like, you know those fucking pubs in yeah, Green Street? Yeah. Or in, Corner, like... Corner, the, the door is kind of... The, 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 door's door, on a, the door's, the door's on, a, on, a corner, on a corner, but yeah. it's obviously straight. So when you and walk then, in, yeah. you can see every single person yeah. at the bar. Yeah. And in Ireland, we've done the opposite. Yeah, and you we've know made what? it so that you can't see a fuck. You can't yeah. see anyone. Yeah, nooks and crannies, baby. <laughs> Snugs. Snugs, nooks, crannies. Yeah. And I noticed when I was in America, like Irish, the Irish bars there, um, they're like in Boston and in New York, they're like halls. Yeah. They're like a community centre. You go in. They probably were like, at one stage, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, I don't, I want to go in there and I, I want to have to ring my mate, not be able to find him for like <laughs> yeah, 20 yeah, minutes because yeah. <laughs> I don't know where the fuck he is. Whereas if you walk into one of those bars, you can literally be like, scan the, I don't want people scanning the bar and seeing me. I think, <laughs> yeah, I think that pubs, Irish pubs are designed in such a way that you could skive off work or your partner. Yeah. And if they looked in the pub, they couldn't see it. Yeah, like if we could, if I came in here and you said, I'm gonna hide. Like, I wouldn't have a good word effect yet. But it's what a, a weird, good point. What a weird thing. I'm gonna like, hide. I'm gonna hide. Come and find me. You have to catch me and buy me pints. <laughs> uh, I was in a bar in Drogheda called Clark's. It's a small bar. Have good you been bar. in it? Yeah. Clark's has like nine snugs. Yeah. Nine I snugs. Remember, yeah. Class. It was. Oh, it was mostly snugs. It's basically like boots. Boots. I can never say yeah. that. Yeah. Like boots. Boots. And not the chemist. <laughs> it's basically like boots boots with a H <laughs> and but it's like it's like they were on the ball before COVID yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, said, yeah. Uh, we're just going to make every single one of these a snug like I was trying to find the toilets and I walked into three different fucking snugs <laughs> but that's what I like about Irish bars I like the snugs I like carpet on the floor I like the design like I, find, I found when I was in England so many of the bars had the feel of like an airport bar yeah fair you know that sort of soulless pint you get before a flight yeah. And it's like the tables are all high like this. Well, you don't this. mind because it's all this because you're going to a you're, yeah, you just you're just in a pint. pub, you're like, well, I'm this not going This is shite crack. Yeah. Weatherspoon's job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> an Irish bar should be a cross between a living room and a, a, a tool shed. It should feel cosy. Clip that. <laughs> it that'll, should make feel, up for, that'll make up for the straw in the Guinness. It what should, you just said. <laughs> I will be using that in the future. It should be cosy. Like, like, like the mammy designed half of it. Yeah. She, she put down carpet, she put down nice seats and she put a fire on. Yeah. But then the dad had to do the decor. Right. So he's got like a plow. He's got like a wooden wheelbarrow <laughs> bolted to the roof. And just in case he needs it. Just, uh, just in case he needs just it. Just, pull it down. Yeah, just like a skeleton. Yeah. Um, just random shit. I remember Ardlo Hannan saying like, an Irish pub looks like a fucking skip exploded. <laughs> <laughs> And I've always liked that. Like, there should be a load of shit yes. stuck to the wall. Yeah. American money. Yeah. Oh, sure, geez. We <laughs> were only uh, in Postcards um, from alcoholics. Yeah. They were like, I'm with my family for three days and I miss you all so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were in um, Ticoli in Galway yesterday and they've just got about 100 or a thousand different notes just kind of hanging down off the bar. You're like dollars. Just everything. Yeah. And you'd literally nearly be kind of looking under going, can I get a point? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. But it's, it's a great point about the Irish bars and like there is, like you hear about these companies that they charge like, you know, 20 grand and it's like, we will deck out we will Irish bar yeah. and you go in and like, and there's, the fucking problem is they're starting to make them in Dublin now. Mm. They just slap on a, a sign and it's like, I'm, I'm not going to 
I don't know, O'Shea's or something. I'm saying that because I don't think there is an yeah. O'Shea's in Dublin. But you can tell, like, the sign, you can see that fibre sign has been there for fucking yeah, months. Yeah, it's ancient. Like, they just slap it on, bolt it over. You go in, everything is just literally brand new and it, they're trying to make it look authentic and it's just, you can t so easily tell. And all the Irish bars all over the world are like that. There was a pub on Wicklow Street. Should I name it? I know it. Mary's. Mary's. Yeah, yeah. Mary's. So I remember. With the Wow Burger. Yeah. <laughs> the authentic we love Irish. Mary's. Authentic Irish Wow Burger. Um, I remember during the boom. I'm not even going to name the bar, let's just talk generically. <laughs> So during the boom, there was a load of pubs that were, hadn't changed since fucking 100 years. Yeah. And the boom arrived, suddenly Ireland had money, so they slapped up a load of big tellies like this. They covered everything in polished steel mm. and mirrors and purple seats. And then... So you're t I won't try, I won't say that loud, but this is a pub in Dublin? There's, this is several pubs. But okay. There's one, there's one, one, like, I there's one in particular that... that um, they boomified the pub, <laughs> and the then pub. when we all turned against that, and and suddenly traditional Irish bars became trendy to drink right, in again. Yeah. So they had to like, oh, they had to reverse everything. So that like, de-boomify. They had to de-boomify. <laughs> they had to tradify the bar. They put back in all the wooden bars. Uh, they put back in like the old Guinness toucan yeah. signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like Mary's, that place in Wicklow Street. <laughs> That's meant to look like a hardware shop. I was drinking a lot of lads, like kind of carpenters from Cavan, and they were like trying to buy stuff behind the bar and like give us a give us a pack of washers there behind the bar. And I was like, uh, sorry man, they're just decorative. Actually, <laughs> like they're actually quite expensive. We had to buy them from an antiques. Yeah. And the uh, Cavan lads just couldn't. Yeah. They were just doing it to be bowed, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. But that's a weird thing, changing tastes unorganically. Yeah. Like you want a pub that doesn't really look like it was designed. Mm. It was. It was fucking put together and then over 20, 30 years. Like a, what do you they call? They just threw shit onto the wall. Like a hoarder. You mm. want a, you want a bar to feel like a hoarder yeah. lives here. Well, I always say like the type of bar I love is it's it's a little bit kind of messy. It's a little yeah. bit untidy, but it's clean. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Where I would draw the line would be if it was fucking. Are filthy, yeah. Clean. You don't want to be filthy, like even this place, it's clean. Like the, yeah, the floors yeah. are clean, the tables are clean, toilets are clean, toilets <laughs> are clean, most importantly. But it should feel cluttered, yeah. Cluttered, There's a difference character. between cluttered and dirty. Cluttered and dirty. There's a difference between cluttered and clotty. Have you ever heard clotty? <laughs> no, clotty is a real cavern term for dirty, like you know, like clot, a clot of dirt. Okay, I think it's an old. Irish Would you say, word. like. He's a clotty bastard. He's a clotty bastard, so he is. <laughs> or you'd say you're a clotty dog. You that clotty mean, dog. That lad's a fucking clotty dog. Do you ever dog. get a shift from the Cavan, the Cavanites that you're, you're, not, you're not as Cavan anymore? Because I'm actually <laughs> from Mead, believe it or not. Really? People always just presume I'm from Dublin. Now, you've, you've more of a Cavan accent than I have a Mead accent. So. I No, because <clears throat> there's a lot of people in Cavan talk like me. Yeah. Um, like my dad talks like me, pretty much, and he's a farmer. Um, I think there's a lot of performative accent stuff mm. going on. Right. Like when I worked in a bar in Cavan, I get 17 year old lads coming in who'd just been trimming hedges with a tractor all day. And they'd come up and they're like, well, Cavan, give us a pint of Heineken there, give it to me in a harp glass. <laughs> there was a mythical thing of harp glasses. Yeah. They don't make them anymore. But a harp glass, I think, had like a circular ring Is on the bottom. The, to do with having more bubbles or something. Bubbles. Well, it, it, there was like a, a cut, a cut spiral into the bottom of it, so bubbles would emanate off this cut uh, spiral. That's bonkers. Well, I've that's heard why of people you know saying you need to be Walter White to I, fucking like, explain this. I've heard of people <laughs> saying like, like you'd hear a fucking give us a fucking uh, point or what's the cheapest one? Give us a Tuborg in a Carlsberg glass because they're convinced there's more. Just because the glass just, is taller, right, right, right. Is more, extra yeah. centimeter of extra centimeter, but it's like um, much no. This was to do, I think, with. The harp glasses at home were like, um, it was just said to be more bubbly or something. But the point I'm trying to make is you have young lads who have heard owl lads say this. Yeah. So they're yeah. just copying it. <clears throat> the shy talk is passed And on. It's, it's kind of the same with accents. I think certain young lads, if you're working in agriculture, you know, you want to sound like you walk in agriculture. I get it. I like get that's, it. Like everything else, if, if those same lads got a job in the finance district, yeah. they'd change their accent <laughs> to fit in there, you know. Yeah. Completely. 
So uh, no, like I, ne- I kind of always talk like this. My dad always talked like this, so I don't really get any shit. Well, uh, bloody lovely point here in Fibber McGee's. An education for myself. I'm very pleasantly surprised with the whole thing. And Kevin McGahan, thank you very much. Is that it? That's it. Oh man, I've so much more to say. Next time, part two. <laughs> Sure, I had fucking shit written down that I this didn't even be, look at. This, this should be.